welcome to the University of Arizona Hangout, the Google Plus Hangout, the first one ever here at the U of A, and we believe one of the first ever involving an athletic director and a conference commissioner. We uh, welcome you in. We'll say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. We've got a great opportunity today uh, for you to join us. We've got some special guests along, a chance to talk University of Arizona athletics, and it's been a very exciting year, a very exciting week on top of that. I'd like to uh, welcome in Greg Byrne, Director of Athletics at the University of Arizona. We're also pleased to be joined by Larry Scott, Commissioner of the Pac-12 Conference, joining us from Dublin. That's not Dublin, California, near his normal home, but Dublin, Ireland. Rocky LaRose, Director of, uh, Deputy Director of Athletics at the University of Arizona. We've got some other special guests coming up as well. Greg, let's uh, start it out with you. It's been a great week for Wildcat Athletics. I know everybody in Tucson and around the state of Arizona excited about a national championship and plenty of stuff going on here on campus. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Brian. It's been a whirlwind week. It's been a, it's been a eventful year uh, that we're wrapping up. Uh, actually, right now with the end of the fiscal year for us and the beginning, uh, really, with all of our, our freshmen showing up for the next year and all of our returners uh, coming back for uh, summer school, uh, we really appreciate Larry Scott joining us and, and even joining us all the way from Ireland. Uh, when uh, our marketing team brought this idea, idea to us, uh, hopefully you've seen with our athletic department, we're willing to try just about anything and, and give it and see how it uh, works with Arizona athletics and I think this is another new creative way to communicate with our fan base. Uh, we appreciate some of our fans joining us as well and, and obviously having Rocky here everything she means to our athletic department and our university and also Wilbur. Uh, I've heard Wilbur's got a sore throat so he may be limited just to yes and no uh, questions uh, today but uh, we appreciate him being part of it as well. Uh, Larry, I, you know, I thought we'd uh, start off with a question from you if you don't mind uh, obviously, uh, you're, I believe, in your third year now as commissioner, maybe fourth year as commissioner of the Pac-12, and to say that uh, you've been sitting idly uh, waiting for things to happen would be a big misstatement. Uh, you've been very innovative uh, with our conference. You've led us to new heights in many, many aspects, and we were so thrilled and proud of the leadership that you provided. Talk a little bit about what you see in the next year, especially with the launch of the Pac-12 network. Sure. Well, first of all, uh, congrats to you, Greg, and everyone at uh, U of A on you know, this initiative and hosting the first uh, Google Hangout. Uh, great way to end this week. Uh, I like the way it started at the beginning with Arizona you know, winning the NCAA baseball championship as well. And um, the week uh, certainly went on from there. Uh, after, after that, you know, Wednesday, uh, Presidential Oversight Committee of the BCS ushered in a new era for college football. Uh, moving to a 14 playoff, which was terrific. And then uh, shortly thereafter, we announced the 12-year agreement uh, for the Rose Bowl and ESPN and solidified its future in the Pac-12's relationship with it going forward. And now we're doing the first Google Plus Hangout this week. So it's been quite a week. And yes, Sunday, uh, I celebrate my third anniversary as, as commissioner of, of the conference. And it has been a whirlwind, very exciting, very proud to lead this conference schools like Arizona, and it's just been terrific the way everyone's come together and not only met, but really exceeded any aspirations I had for what uh, the conference could achieve, and I feel like we're just scratching the surface uh, still. So, uh, you know, what you guys are doing, you know, with social media initiatives and this and a lot of the plans you've got at the university are indicative of some of the innovation and excellence happening at all of our campuses across the conference. It's just such an exciting time to be commissioner of this conference and to work with uh, all of you. So we've got a uh, long to-do list at the conference. Next year is going to be very exciting um, in a lot of respects. Um, the main, main initiative is that we're six weeks away from launching the Pac-12 networks. This is the first completely conference-owned network. Um, a lot of work going into that. We move into our studios in downtown San Francisco July 9th. The networks launch. August 15th, and I'm just so excited for our fans. Our fans are going to get to see every football game, every men's basketball game, and 700 Olympic sports events this next year between ESPN, Fox, and the Pac-12 networks. It's really a game changer. Unprecedented exposure for our programs, national exposure, and while football, men's basketball gets a lot of the attention, you know, one of the things I'm most excited about for our student athletes 
that are so excellent in what they do is that they're going to get the exposure and recognition that they deserve. I, th I think about baseball as an example. And you guys just winning the NCAA championship. You know, we've had very little baseball coverage uh, in our media partnerships up till now. We're going to have over 100 baseball games this coming season. Just think about that. The fans across the country that now see how prolific Pac-12 baseball is, they're going to get to see a lot. Of, we're going to have over 100 women's softball games. We're going to have 80 some odd women's volleyball games. Uh, on and on, across the board, uh, all of our sports will be represented. And what this means for our student athletes, what this means for our fans, uh, is tremendous. So a lot of work's going into it. We've got 85, as of this morning, I got an email when I arrived in Dublin. We've got 85 people hired that are going to be working, that are hired to work at Pac-12 Enterprises right now. By the time we launch in six weeks, it'll probably be around 120. Uh, these are people involved in the TV business, sales, uh, the digital business. The other thing, uh, you know, especially given that we're doing this today, uh, using technology, one of the things I'm most excited about is, as we've tried to be innovative in so many respects, this TV network's not going to be your typical RSN. Not only are we going to have a national network and six regional networks that give you know, fans more of what they want. So fans and following Pac-12 Arizona are going to see a lot more U of A and Arizona State. Um, they're going to get uh, more of what they want when they want it. But they're going to be able to get it on any device. In addition to watching on traditional TV, subscribers to the network are going to be able to get Pac-12 Arizona or, or any regional Pac-12 network on their iPad, on their smartphone, on their computer, and this is going to be great. You know, so many of our fans and alumni are technologically savvy, uh, you know, cutting edge. Uh, they're, they're, they're out and about. They're mobile, and they, they want to get their, their sports. They want to follow their favorite teams uh, when they can. So a lot of work's going on behind the scenes um, to make sure that our networks are compatible with all these devices, and we're going to be one of the few networks that's actually doing this, uh, making its networks available a lot. Um, so that's obviously taken a lot of time and effort. Obviously, we'll have our second football championship game this coming year, which is exciting. We've got a major change to our basketball tournament, uh, moving from Staples Center, where it's been 10 years, uh, to Las Vegas. Uh, very excited about that. We, with the recruiting classes that we have in men's basketball, uh, the excitement you know, around our, our programs, and Arizona's going to be you know, right there. Um, I feel like the move of this basketball championship is going to inject new enthusiasm and energy around the tournament, and we're hoping fans really rally and come to this event because it's an event beyond what's taking place on the court. There'll be a lot of uh, entertainment, excitement uh, off the court as well. So we're pretty pumped up about that. And of course, the women's basketball tournament moving to Seattle, working with the Seattle Storm there. Again, a new beginning for women's basketball. We're working with a group that's renowned within the WNBA for nurturing and developing their fan base. And we think they're going to do a great job with the women's basketball tournament. So there's plenty more going on, on as well, but you know, as you can tell, we've got a uh, pretty long to-do list. Well, thanks, Thank thanks very much, Larry. And, uh, we're certainly proud of the uh, trophy that we have behind my left uh, shoulder, and uh, we want many more of those to come for our conference as well as the University of Arizona. We're, we couldn't be prouder of Coach Lopez and, and the team, and a uh, number of us got to be around him for the last two weeks back in Omaha. And uh, when you talk about college athletics and who they are, uh, it, it's exactly what you want intercollegiate athletics to be all about. So we appreciate that. And, and to our Arizona fans out there, I've told Commissioner Scott that uh, Arizona will be in Las Vegas and, and hopefully in Seattle as well with the women's tournament, from Las Vegas to the men's tournament, uh, strong and enforced wearing our colors and representing the University of Arizona. All right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Larry. That trophy looks good in your office, Greg. I, I know there's been competition who gets to hold it the longest, and I think you've got the record right now, so <laughs> hang on to that for a while. We'd like to uh, welcome some other uh, members on our uh, panel this morning. Connor Montijo, a lifelong U of A fan here in Tucson. J.P. Benedict, former U of A student body president, joining us from Los Angeles. Anissa Muccio, a U of A senior, and, uh, well, Wilbur the Wildcat, of course. And so, Connor, let's, uh, let's start with you. Hi, uh, Larry, I had a quick question. You had mentioned the Rose Bowl and uh, the new playoff format. I was wondering how that would affect the Big Ten Rose Bowl Pac-12 um, that it's been in the past and how that's going to affect in the future going forward. Yeah, great. Well, you know, in thinking about the postseason and how we're going to evolve beyond the BCS, there were three important principles of Pac-12 conference. One was preserving the great tradition we have with the Rose Bowl 
in 2014, it'll be the 100th Rose Bowl game. And the Pac-12 has participated from the beginning. So we really cherish uh, that relationship um, and wanted to, you know, maintain um, our relationship with the Big Ten in that game. Second important priority was you know, maintaining the value and importance of the regular season, which is so important to uh, all of our fans across the conference. And the third was to be part of the future of college football and try to be progressive, uh, be open-minded about new formats, um, and try to find a uh, creative way to move forward with a playoff structure that fans have wanted so badly while preserving those other priorities. I think we found um, an artful balance in doing that. Uh, specifically, the Rose Bowl will host some semifinals during the 12-year period. We haven't finalized yet how many that's going to be. Uh, whether it's two, three, four, it'll be something in that vicinity. And every year, aside, for the, aside from those years that the Rose Bowl is hosting a semifinal, the Pac-12 will play the Big Ten at the Rose Bowl. So we've found a way, I think, to preserve that annual tradition, uh, to preserve you know, what Pac-12 football players, when they come to our schools, what they dream of, what they think about achieving, it's going to the Rose Bowl. So uh, that will be maintained. But it was really important to the Rose Bowl people that they, uh, and our, our partners in Pasadena, that they get to be in the mix of hosting some Senate finals to keep their relevance, um, to keep their status. Um, so um, by having them host a few semifinals during this 12-year period, we think it achieves that, but still gives us the connectivity with the Big Ten and the Rose Bowl that we wanted. And New Year's Day is going to become even more important as a college football tradition. Um, obviously, that is its history, but over the years, while the BCS was responsible for a lot of very positive things for college football, you know, one of the unintended consequences was losing uh, the value of New Year's Day to an extent when games like the Orange Bowl and Sugar Bowl, you know, moved into early January, weekday, um, evening events. Um, I suspect that you're going to see the Champions Bowl, possibly the Orange Bowl, come back to January 1st with the Rose Bowl and really turn it into the blockbuster day that, um, you know, college fans used to. Uh, think about when they think about New Year's Day. And the other games that will be part of semifinals will be December 31st. So I think for college football fans, and this wasn't evident necessarily by all the announcements, we are going to be doing something I think very significant and bringing a focus to December 31st and January 1st, not just for the semifinals but for the major bowl games. Larry, thank you very much. I know that uh, Commissioner Scott's got a busy schedule over in Dublin right now, so we're going to uh, let him go, and we thank you very much for your contributions today, Larry, and also your great contributions to the conference. We look forward to a, a great season starting here this fall. Great being with you, and congratulations on this initiative. All right. Larry Scott, Commissioner of the Pac-12, joining us from uh, Dublin, Ireland. I want to bring in uh, some of our other folks today before we start uh, getting some questions from our social media friends. Uh, J.P. Benedict, former U of A student body president in Los Angeles, houses everything in uh, SoCal right now, J.P.? Uh, it's going well. Beautiful weather. Uh, I'm sure uh, quite a bit cooler than Arizona right now, at least in Phoenix and Tucson. Um, yeah, I've got a question. I, I guess the question uh, for Greg, and that is, um, you know, since we're since we're doing this innovative social media uh, hangout right now, I had a question about uh, when when Rich Rodriguez was hired. And the the tweet that went out, I want to know if that was that was your idea or if someone put you up to that because I I thought that was really cool and I know that got a lot of buzz. Well, it it did. Good question and and thanks for joining us today. That did get a lot of uh, a lot of buzz. Uh, it was it, a funny story with it. We had a whole marketing plan put together uh, for the hiring of Coach Rodriguez, and one of the things was announcing because because I'm so active with Twitter, it was announcing his hire through my Twitter account. And so we had that as part of the plan. And when I had taken off from Tucson with my wife, Virginia, to go pick up Coach Rodriguez and his wife, Rita, and their family, uh, it was still quiet. Nobody knew that we were hiring Coach Rodriguez. And so what, right before we landed in Detroit, uh, I asked Virginia, I said, hey, what should I put in that tweet uh, to announce Coach Rodriguez? And so we kind of kicked around some ideas. And Regina's actually very creative. Um, and it was our marketing team that originally said, let's give this a try. 
So uh, I said, well, I, I thought I'd just be a simple tweet. And Regina said, you know what you need to do? You need to take a picture of, of you and, and Rich, and then we'll tweet that out and say, and the new Arizona coach is dot, 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 dot. And so Regi we, Coach Rodriguez and I were about ready to take the picture, and Rita and the kids were back there. I said, hey, why don't you come join us? So they jumped in on the picture. My wife, Regina, took the picture. We tweeted it out, and it was amazing because that picture alone got 67. Last time I looked, it had 67,000 unique views uh, on, through my Twitter account, and then I know it got put in lots and lots of articles. So it showed you the power of social media, and in today's instant information world, we thought, let's be the ones to, to share the information. So uh, we thought it was innovative uh, and think it's a, it was a great way to promote our football program, the hiring of Coach Rodriguez and the University of Arizona and the athletic department. So every once in a while, we'll, uh, we'll tweet some things and, and break, break some news through that just because we think it's a great way to engage our fan base and, and keep them up to date with what's going on. All right, thanks, JP. Nisa Mucci, was a U of A senior. Probably a pretty exciting time to be on campus right now, right? Super exciting. It's really fun. Um, Greg, can you just tell us more um, where you see Arizona athletics in 10 years from now? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, it's something that Rocky and I and, and a number of people within our staff work on quite a bit. Uh, we have a lot of different uh, needs that we have to address over the coming years. Uh, we want to get back to where Arizona year in and year out is one of the top 10 institutions in the Learfield Cup. We just finished 19th this year. Last year we finished 16th. It was our first time back, being back in the top 20 in a number of years. So we're making good progress from a competitive standpoint. We have to address our facility infrastructure. The north end zone is a big deal. We also have to look at, which is now the Lowell Stevens building, uh, we actually have to look at the rest of the stadium, what takes place there to set Arizona Stadium up for the next 40 to 50 years. Uh, McHale is 40 years old. It's the home of so all of our sports, basically, uh, for the training and academic support. And so we have to say what are our next steps there. But one of the things we really spend a lot of time, and I give Rocky and Mike Mead from our academic support, from Cats Academics, a lot, of, a lot of credit. We've really made great strides academically. Our APR numbers have improved. Our graduation rates have improved. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that the young men and the young women we recruit here at the U University of Arizona understand how important we take their ability to get a college degree to prepare them for the rest of their lives. And a lot of people are into that, but we want to make sure we're in the top of the conferences academically as well, just as importantly as competitively. All right, let's go to uh, Wilbur T. Wildcat. Uh, Wilbur, I know the, the voice is bothering you right now. You were back in Omaha to celebrate the national championship. I'm just wondering, Wilbur, were you jealous at all? The players, there was a dog pile after the game. Would you have rather had a cat pile in that situation? <laughs> Wilbur's nodding yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, Rocky, um, just recently you've announced your retirement. Your career here at the University of Arizona starting as a student athlete onto an administrator has been unsurpassed. We want to congratulate you on that. I know it's going to be a while, thank goodness, before you leave, but as you look back at your time here, what will be some of your great memories? Oh my gosh, there's so many over 34 years and um, all relived actually in a flashback when we won this national championship on Monday night. Uh, that was our 21st and I have been so honored and blessed to have been here for 20 of those national championships. So uh, a lot of those flashed before my eyes uh, Monday night. Uh, so certainly the victories are, are sweet, but just the day-to-day -day in and out, getting to know the student athletes, you know, I think uh, when I... I kind of choked up the other night when I realized I'm kind of on my third generation of student athletes. <laughs> We're starting to see uh, not only children of student athletes I knew back in the 70s, but uh, we're almost to the grandchildren age, so it might be time. All right. Thank you, Rocky. Let's get to some questions now from our social media friends. And these came, and these were tweets that came in to Greg Byrne. First, first of all, from Hitchens4, he asked, will the uh, Pac-12 regional networks be available all over the country, Greg? Yeah, it, it'll be an evolution of that. Uh, right now, the, the, most of the major local te uh, cable companies will be covering or carrying the Pac-12 networks, and then I'm, then my understanding is there'll be different packages that will be offered uh, through the cable companies to allow that. Now, from the uh, direct TV and DISH networks, as of right now, there, there's not an agreement that's been reached. 
we as a conference, we as an institution have asked our fans to start putting pressure on both of those entities to say we want you to carry the Pac-12 network. We want you to not only carry the national network, but the regional networks as well. Short term, uh, there will be obviously a lot of availability through the, the web and, and your, your phones, your smartphones, but the goal is to get it to make sure that it's on your home TV and, but our fans are going to be critical in allowing that to happen, so we just continue to encourage you to, to email, to call, to send letters, and let them know how important this is to you, their, their customers. All right. Thank you, Greg. And uh, next for Greg from DR Steel R on his Twitter account. Greg, do you think alcohol played a role in getting more people to watch games at High Corbett? And what about alcohol in the future at Arizona Stadium? Well, Arizona Stadium, no plans of that at all right now. Uh, I think uh, I, I like the environment that we have without selling beer at the games. Uh, now, with uh, with High Corbett, it was just a piece of the puzzle to re-engage our, our community with Arizona baseball. And we were very pleased with that. Our attendance numbers were way up. Our revenue was way up. The players just talk cons constantly about the impact the crowd had on them, and especially in a few of the close games. And, uh, and then I think the greatest tribute was when we played the uh, regional game, I believe it was against Louisville, on either Friday or Saturday night. Uh, w because it was an NCAA championship event, we did not sell beer at the, at the game, and we had over 5,000 people there. And, that, uh, and, and the fact that we were third in the country in regional attendance behind only South Carolina and LSU, uh, and so it shows you the passion that our fan base has for Arizona baseball. We just thought it was something that would uh, give a person another reason to come watch the Wildcats play, and it, and it worked very well, and we were very pleased at how our fans handled it throughout the season. All right, I'll throw this question out to uh, Wilbur Wildcat. It's from Sublime167. How about red pinstripe for the U of A baseball team? Pinstripes, red pinstripes for the U of A baseball team. Yes or no, Wilbur? Hmm, he's contemplating. He says yes. He likes the, uh, the red pinstripe idea. Well, Wilbur loves anything red. That's all there is to it. Uh, Greg, uh, another question, and this comes from Greg Orbino. Uh, he wants to know plans uh, for this upcoming season for their north end zone in terms of uh, there's still going to be construction going on in the football stadium during the season, how the north end zone will appear during this kind of transition year. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to appear as a construction zone. We are, we're ordering some, uh, some banners to promote and advertise the different seating sections that will be available in the Lowell Stevens North End Zone facility. And uh, it's something that will uh, allow our fans to understand what they need to do to get engaged and purchase those tickets. Interestingly, uh, we, were, we met with a family yesterday who uh, uh, were talking about a gift for the Lowell Stevens football facility. And uh, we, we got to do a three-dimensional tour of the facility with them. It, the seating there, even though people will say it's in the end zone, the seating in both what's going to be the club level and also the chairback seating below is remarkable seating. It's actually where the coaches like to watch film of the game to see the holes develop and, and watch the action from the end zone. So I think once our fans see it and give it a try, they'll be engaged with it and like it very much. On top of that, I know restrooms and concessions are often an issue at Arizona Stadium. We've way overbuilt our restrooms and concessions in the Lowell Stevens facility to allow uh, our fans to have very high-end amenities, and it'll also take some of the pressure off the east and west sides of the stadium, especially on the north side of the stadium. And I think people will see that and say, I want to be a part of that. So uh, it will be a construction zone, and we'll, we'll look forward to getting in there in August of 2013 for Coach Rodriguez's second season at Arizona. All right, there was a question about uh, the copper helmets, uh, red helmets for the football team, and I wanted Connor, J.P. Nessa also to uh, chime in on this. Uh, Greg, first of all, uh, is there a timetable when the copper helmets will be unveiled? These right here? Is that what That's you're talking it. about? <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a couple samples, as you know. We, uh, Coach Rodriguez and I have talked a couple different times about when we uh, – May uh, don them and, and have the, uh, the, the the football team wear them. We're, of course, not going to tell you that yet. But uh, yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. I meet with a lot of recruits uh, for all of our different sports. And I've had a couple uh, football recruits in, in the last week, week and a half, or last couple weeks. And uh, they have been uh, very excited to see that. And, what, and they also understand the tradition that our state has with the copper industry and the mining industry. 
and we think it's a great way to be to show that history and be respectful of what that's meant to our state at the same time too uh, giving our, our student athletes something to be excited about from the uniform side too. What does everybody else think about the, the copper helmets? Now I, you talked about kind of like the history of the state but um, there's also you know the history of the U of A wearing uh, silver and sage. Is there any ideas been kicked around about maybe bringing back those colors as uh, kind of like the copper helmets every once in a while? Rocky what do you think? Uh, I'm not sure that helmet's big enough for your head, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just had to do that. Sorry. I yeah, love. Yeah, I wouldn't fit. I'm not going to put it on. <laughs> well, you know, I'm the biggest traditionalist around here and historian. I love them. I can't wait. As far as the, as far as the, uh, the the traditional sage and green, right now we don't have any plans for that, uh, but you never know. All right, JP or Nissa? Nissa? Yeah, yeah, I like the copper helmets. Um, my one question, and actually, we were kicking around the question with some buddies this this past weekend. What uh, what color uniforms would you wear with the copper helmets? I think that <laughs> was the question most asked. Well, I, I'm guessing we haven't decided for sure, but we we've, we've looked at it with a couple different sets of our uniforms. We think the blue probably makes the most sense. It, it, we think it uh, is a good combination. Uh, but uh, most likely it would be the navy blue. All right, let's go on to another Twitter question here, uh, Greg. This is from MPSHRK. Wants to know uh, if the fences, the outfield fences at High Corbett Field will be moved in next year. Well, Coach Lopez and I actually talked about that on the plane ride back from Omaha. And uh, he actually likes the dimensions. A year ago, he would have said, let's, uh, let's move them in at some point. We actually looked at it for this season. But the thing we were very focused on is trying to get ourselves to Omaha and, and prepared for Omaha. And so having been there now, and almost every game we were there for, the wind was blowing in from the outfield, which does, that does, happens a lot in Nebraska. Uh, but it's a big yard there and so we're playing in a big yard at home and so we thought it was great preparation for us so as of right now we have no plans to move the move the fence in we're going to keep it at the dimensions it's at all right Wilbur I guess it's uh, back to you now uh, any last well I know you have no last words Wilbur are you excited for the start of the football season all right Wilbur's always excited <laughs> Do we have anything else from uh, our panel this morning for Greg or any other comments? Yeah, I have one question. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, you, you had talked about, you know, brought in the copper helmets for football. Are you going to use copper helmets maybe for the baseball team or for softball or any of the other sports also? We actually uh, kicked around the idea of, of wearing copper helmets in Omaha, uh, but uh, as of right now, it's going to be... Uh, solely with football, but you never know. As you can tell, we try to surprise you with things once in a while. Rocky, uh, Title IX has been, of course, a great boost for women's athletics, and we've just passed a monumental anniversary of that act, and just wanted to give you a chance. I know you were one of the, the forerunners in the University of Arizona uh, behind Mary Roby. I remember Dr. Roby was a tremendous in uh, the beginning of, of Title IX. Can you talk a little bit about what it's meant to women's athletics over the years? Well, yes, and not only women's athletics, but I think this country and this society. I mean, today I love the fact that uh, no one has any idea really what it was like back in the 60s pre-Title IX when women didn't have the opportunity to compete at an intercollegiate uh, level. Now it's just everyday existence thanks to Title IX and all the opportunities that our women have. Uh, it's just an everyday existence and, and that's probably the greatest nod to Title IX that there is. Greg, the uh, annual report for the U of A Athletic Department is uh, uh, almost finished. Can you give us a little idea when uh, the fans will see that? Yeah, well, our plan is to uh, re release our video annual report tonight. Uh, we uh, That'll be our final piece to wrapping up the year. And I know a lot of organizations uh, put out a, a print annual report. We thought, let's do something by video that we can easily share all literally all across the world. And so it'll go over the highlights and some of the things that we've been working on. And it's about a 15-minute presentation that we'll email out to everybody 
uh, that's within our database uh, this evening or late this afternoon, and we'll look forward to hearing everybody's comments back on that. All right, any other questions from our uh, panelists today? Good. I'm just glad we beat ASU to the punch with the gold helmets. They look awesome. We don't ever try to do anything like that. <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, this is the, the first ever Google Plus Hangout here at the University of Arizona. This is a, a great way for everyone to be in touch with uh, Greg Byrne, Rocky LaRose, Wilbur Wildcat, uh, Larry Scott, uh, Connor J.P. and Issa. Appreciate all of your time this morning. We look forward to doing this again in the future. And uh, as we always say, bear down. Bear down. Bear down. Thank you. Excellent.